Hey, podcast fiends. Hopefully everybody had a wonderful weekend. Welcome back. I had a, like, how was your weekend? Pretty good. Did like, a little early like birthday really celebrating. What did you do? We did a brunch with my parents yesterday. Okay. All right. Uh, so that was, that was good. Okay. Anything else? Uh, just got some stuff done in the house that I've been wanting to do. So just some little projects here and there. So it was just a productive weekend. Those okay. feel good. All right. That's fantastic. Mm-hmm. I took care of a sick family member. Attended a funeral, not related, and I know, right? Oh gosh, I know, I know. <laughs> Thank right? goodness. Um, no, actually, it was great. I had uh, uh, remember my family. It was in the hospital, and basically just took care of them for a couple of days, and they got out. Um, and by took care of them, I mean gave them a place to sleep and eat. Yeah, just to be around in yeah. case something was needed. Yeah, just in case they needed something. So did that. Um, watched Ad Astra. That's in the podcast. Yeah, we talked about that. Um, checked the um, like shipping tracking info on my phone about a hundred times. He talks about that in the That's podcast. That's in there too. Watch the XFL also in the podcast. So in case you think that Obi lies about what he does on the weekend compared to what he talks about during the show, that's not true. He does exactly what he's talking about. Yeah. Other things in the podcast today, we do talk about the XFL, uh, how you can't trust the po- post office. <laughs> um, Google Maps is trying to kill you. I introduced Nikki to the Brimley Cocoon line. Never knew about this. Um, I and don't then, think. The, you know, okay, can I just tell you, like, I feel like the last 10 minutes, I have just once again been brought face-to-face with just the enormous amount of film-related facts that are just worthless. They're so worthless. And I love it. But they're, I love it. they're I just, not worthless to you. You like that stuff. No, I like it. Mm-hmm. And that gives them value. But I mean, like... In an eternal slash economic slash the world blows up and I must survive on my own. Oh, no. You're worthless. Your movie trivia will save you somehow. I don't think it'd be so. Like, no, Here, no. Remember we watched in that one movie. We're not supposed to do this. We've got to do that. Yeah. I'm sure it'll help somehow. And movies are well known for giving a factual presentation. <laughs> It's oh my gosh. Well, we have other stuff in the podcast too, we in do. case if none of that was enticing. Right. So you guys oh, we didn't even mention the food fight. We did a riot food fight with the new winter mint and the white fudge ding dongs from Hostess. These uh-huh. are the limited edition winter mint ones. Boy, we you know, we really did a comprehensive uh food fight. We tried them we frozen, did. we tried them uh not frozen. And mintless. <laughs> and mintless with the white fudge ones. So that's, that's a lot of work. You can check out if you want to watch the riot food fight that's radio you riot which is our facebook page where you should be following us anyway so you can check out our other show stuff we offer yes um you can also find things at riot.radiou.com which when we hang up uh i am going to go put our food fight there so you can, so you can find, find it, it there as well so you guys have a great day Nikki and I will just uh, be sitting by the door waiting for the post office to hopefully come and bring a phone. You're going to get your new phone today. You'll be so excited. And it's going to go well. It's my new to me phone. So tomorrow we're going to have an update and it's going to be fantastic. Fingers crossed. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) It's the riot. One day, a heroic time traveler will go back in time to make sure none of this ever happens. Until then. It's the worst of the riot on Radio U. So the Oscars were last night. We all stayed up really late to see how it all turned out. Did we all? Did we? Or are we just reading it this morning? I've had to. I don't even know if I want to talk about it, but I did a deep dive on my Oscar feelings last night. I feel like I finally come to peace with why I feel the way I feel. That you which is, don't care for them? Uh Kind of an angry indifference. Like I, not only do I not like them, but they bother me just a little bit. But I think it, I like that part the most. So let's talk about some of the winners from last night. The most important to me being Taika Watiti. Did I get it? Ty, uh, you know, Tika, you said it wrong a few times, and I just can't get it back. Every he's time the I hear it, guy yes. and the what we do in the shadows he's guy, amazing. He's an amazing writer. He's really good, and he's just a great actor. Jojo Rabbit. He got a best adapted screenplay for that. Have you seen that yet? No, not yet. Okay, me either. Good. Every time I want to see it, I hear from like five or ten people are like, "Don't do it. You should see it. Don't do it." And it's just this big thing. Okay, uh, best animated feature. Toy Story 4. Okay. And then both. Best- Don't do it. No, just- <laughs> well, you it's know, on Disney Plus now, it's on so Disney it doesn't Plus, matter. <laughs> and I still don't want to see it. Uh, best original score went to Joker. Mm-hmm. Best director, Bong Joon Ho for Parasite. Best su- supporting actress, Laura Dern for Marriage Story. Well, there you go, Netflix. Something. You got Good. something. Renee Zellweger got Judy for Best Actress. Best supporting actor went to Brad Pitt. 
for Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Best Actor went to Joaquin Phoenix for Joker. And Best Picture went to, and Best Foreign Language Picture. Both mm-hmm. went to Parasite, which is the first time in history that a non-English speaking film has. Am I getting that right? That's correct. Okay. The one Best Picture. And it, it seems like for the Oscars last night, most of that went the way people thought it would. It did. Well, I never saw Parasite, so I don't know. I thought, okay, I thought it was a horror film. Did you? It's suspense. I did. I thought it was, it, it doesn't matter. It doesn't <laughs> it's matter. Fine. It's fine. There is, uh, there's a couple of other South Korean films that I got it mixed up with, uh, and most of you don't watch you know, sci-fi slash horror that comes from Asia. So don't worry about it. It's intense. (laughs) It's fine. It's better. It's it's just a pass. (laughs) Okay. All right. Well, there you have it. Well, congratulations to everybody. The best picture winners of, well, and just the Oscar winners of 2020. Um, Congratulations. Well, you've handled that very mature and just very casual. It's fine. So you're good. Have a great day. (laughs) Enjoy winning, everybody. Things are never as bad as they seem, except when it comes to the riot. riot. Then they're worse. They're always worse. It's the riot on Radio U. It is Google's ultimate plan to kill you. (laughs) I I I have evidence right here. Now, here's how the plan works. It's years of faithful service. (laughs) It's years of trusting them no matter what. Uh Uh-huh. Slowly but surely. And then it's you beginning to blindly obey your GPS like it's a joke on the first season of The Office. Maybe it was season two. And then Google says to cross the river. Yeah. The river's frozen. So you go for a walk. And then the next thing you know... You're almost dead. So what happened? Uh, we've got a guy here. Do we have his name? It looks like they're holding his name. Uh, that's probably for the best. I think he wants it that way. Even though he is not the first time we have heard stories of people f- like blindly, faithfully following their GPS, mm-hmm. not questioning when normally you would think someone would question, you question. Like, I'm not on the road anymore. I should stop. But they just keep going. So this guy's making his way back to his hotel. In Minneapolis, about 3 a.m. on Saturday, he tries to cross the Mississippi River on foot on ice. He falls in. Did he not have a car or was he just trying to get back with walking directions? It seems to me that he was walking. Um, Here's what I love. The Minneapolis Fire Department chief says, uh, you know, there's a bridge right there. (laughs) Well, I mean, at 3 a.m., maybe he didn't see it. And he says... I think that's what Google probably meant Ah, to use the bridge. Yeah, he got it wrong. Yeah. Uh, The man was visiting from out of state and had a mild case of hypothermia. But he's okay? Right. Good. So this morning we're all ready to laugh it off like it's no big deal, but I'm here to tell you that Google tried to kill this guy. Wow. Okay? That could have been way worse than it was. That could have been you. Could have been me. And this unveils their secret plan to one day conquer the world by misinformation but i don't think they want to kill us all because then there's no one to use their products i don't think that's it nikki they might want to keep us down so we just follow along nichols nikki single-handedly dismantles the terminator franchise (laughs) the machines don't need to kill us all they They need us us here to sell us their products and to build things in their factories isn't that true all right they need some of us maybe not all of us but a few Oh, no, I think they probably need as many of us as possible to look at the ads. <laughs> Make sure you look at the ads. Plus, Google can't read your email if you're dead. Well, so just they be careful keep reading them. Uh, next time. I mean, 3 a.m. is a tough time to be heading home by foot in Minneapolis. <laughs> Something tells me he was probably and better off on foot than driving, well, if you know what I mean. I do, but I think he should have, uh, you know, taken a ride or that also can be bad. Maybe just stayed where what he was. Th- what do you think? This is an ad for Uber? No, just stay where Don't he was. Don't end up in the mighty Mississippi. <laughs> just, Call an Uber. No, he should have just stayed where he was. Gotten help that way. Obadiah and Nikki tried their hardest. And that's what really matters. This is the worst of the Ryan podcast. Can you love again? And the answer is, in order to love, you must trust, Mm -hmm. which begs another question. Can you trust again? And the answer is no. (laughs) No, I can't. Not even a little? 
Uh-uh, uh-uh. Not even just a small part of your heart can trust too, again. Too hurt, Nikki. Too hurt. My my heart trusted too much. Uh huh. And, and now was it damaged can't. too much. Now they say that uh, time doesn't heal all wounds, but if the Lord gets involved, we can get it taken care of. But I'll tell you this, Nikki. Uh, I just can't trust the United States Postal Service. Why? What did it do? What did it do? <laughs> To How you, like quickly recently. Some forget. No, I know I shouldn't say that because we've all got our own stories. The very glasses on my face right now, a constant reminder that the post office can't be trusted. Every time <laughs> I look out, it is a symbol of distrust. Normally, uh, what we've experienced is say, like, you're waiting for a delivery from the postal service. Yeah, you and are. they got to walk it up to the door. And Obi's last one was where he saw the person just drive right on by. Didn't even get out to try to take it up. They drove by in the status <laughs> update. Updated to basically no one was home. Yeah, like they didn't try, they and then you have to go pick it up. Even try, try <laughs> to make the delivery. They just they kept hurt going. you, and they that's true. They didn't want to get out of their car to give me my package. So today, I am expecting a delivery. Oh, you are here or home? Home. Mm. It's an iPhone. It's my phone. You didn't bring it here? No. <laughs> so what are you going to do? Just wait outside? I'm thinking that I'm just going to sit on the porch. You should. All day. <laughs> because if not, they're going to drive right on fast And I'm going to run three cameras <laughs> so that when they go, Man. I'm going to go in and be like, hey, I would like to show you this montage that I've put together of the postal <laughs> worker driving past my house and not bringing me my iPhone. Well, you can usually Would you like hear. To see it? You can hear when the postal worker, or like Amazon or something, come. Like you can hear them coming. Yeah. But it's always when you've been waiting, you've been waiting. You go do one tiny little thing. That's the other thing. Is like you're terrified. Can't go to the bathroom. You need can't. to stop drinking water right now. Right that way now. You don't have to like, go. <laughs> no water. No, no nothing. Food, no nothing. Just sitting there waiting. <laughs> Good luck to you. Do you have a normal time for your postal person though? I do. And I also have a, like, it says, today's the day. Yeah. It said that for the last two or three days, that today was the day. It's like a, it was not quite overnighted, but it was priority whatever. So they're supposed to bring it today, but we've all heard <laughs> that before. Good luck to you. <laughs> Maybe sp- strong today. Don't leave it. Just stay outside and just wait. I want to be surprised. Wouldn't that be something? Maybe put a little note, uh, like a passive one, like an aggressive one, but... You know, just maybe be nice, but what put a I, note. What if I got a huge piece of poster board and hung it on the door and it says, I'm here. I'm here. I see you. I know if you don't come to the door. I'm here and I'm watching. <laughs> well, that's cool. You're going to get your new phone today. Am I? Yes, you are. Am I? Yep. Because okay. we're going to speak good things. <laughs> Am I? Yes. Okay. <laughs> if not, you could at least go track him down in the neighborhood. Just go sprinting after him. Ice cream man! <laughs> Ice cream man! Well, I was going to say get in your car, but that might seem like too scary for the guy. Do a slow roll past and hold up my address. So, like, I can't help but notice you drove past. Sign that says, I know. <laughs> I know. Uncomfortable silences during that morning carpool. Not a problem. These two never shut up. It's the riot on Radio U. That's my laser sound. (laughs) So now that's football is flying past you. So now that the NFL's over, uh, the XFL is something that they have just started. Yeah, the XFL started today, or started today, started Saturday. Totally forgot about it. So thank you, people who tweeted, because I really completely forgot, forgot about, about it. it. We well, didn't help- talk about it at all on Friday. Well, I'm not not surprised. <laughs> but help me remind, like, remind me. Is the XFL the one that used to be a long time ago, but it's back? Or is this the new one? Well, okay. No. For, like, arena football. Back in, like, 2000-something, there was an XFL. But the idea was, like, we're going to bring the WWE and America back into football to football. That was back in the early one. Yeah. And it was like, we're going to take you inside the cheerleaders locker room and et cetera, et cetera. As if, well, whatever. Um, so <laughs> the new one is more like we're clean cut Americans and everybody going to have their hand. They're, on the, they're, they're all no kneeling. No kneeling <laughs> and everybody going to be, Go America all the time. They do the uh, 
They do all that, not just at the start of the game, but they do it throughout the game. Yeah. They're like, and now to start the second quarter, here is another person to sing the national anthem. God bless America and God bless the XFL. That is that, no joke what they were trying to go for. Yeah. And did you notice that the NFL was a little quieter about that? About the year? XFL or the NFL? No, I feel like the XFL, uh, well, anyway. So the XFL, uh, they debuted to 3.3 million viewers on feels Saturday. Pr- feels pretty good. That's pretty good what was the team or did they have multiple games well the first game was played on abc and it was um i was really hoping it would say here <laughs> uh i was re- really hoping that it would say america just say it was, it was america's america team. versus america <laughs> america's boys out there doing the the lord's work <laughs> uh I, I don't know it doesn't say yeah, um, they say that viewership peaked at the end of the broadcast, so there are more people watching at the end than at the beginning. They say that's a very good sign. So if you watch it, though, the main thing we were wondering about is how was the production quality? You know like, how did like, it look? To me, it looks like college football. It did? Yeah, it did. Um, it was fine. Like, their their graphics were fine. They were trying to, you could see spaces where they were trying to innovate with some rule changes and uh, some like some of their graphics and some of their production stuff. And like the big thing is like that guy's running the thing with an Xbox controller and like little things here and there. But overall, I just wanted to see like, Hey, is this any good? And you know what? I found it to be perfectly watchable. Like that's fun. The kind of thing where it was like, you know what? It's Saturday afternoon. I like having football on, on a Saturday afternoon. I'll turn this on. This will do. Now, why don't I want football on Sunday afternoon? I don't know. (laughs) But Saturday feels like a day to have football on. You're more of a college football fan, not yeah. not so much of a you know NFL guy. So one of the things they're saying about this is that the XFL has done a much better job getting television deals than the Alliance of American Football. That was the other one that started, was it last year or two years ago, and it just tanked. They couldn't even finish their season. It had like a few games in, and then they needed like an emergency funding. Yes. And they got some, but it wasn't and enough. it just tanked again. Well, good. So. I mean... It's nice to have football on. I get the feeling that the XFL, while it may not be here forever, Mm -hmm. I just feel like they built a better business model by waiting. And I would imagine that we're probably in for a couple of seasons of it. I could be wrong, but I just had this feeling when I was watching it. I was like, you know, this feels like... uh, Maybe the money's managed a bit. Responsibly sourced... Oh, crap. What's that? Responsibly sourced and locally grown football <laughs> that uh, is sustainable. Sure. It could last. They won't run through the money as quickly as, as the others, which seem to to not understand how to keep it. So I didn't watch going. the one on ABC. I ended up watching the one that was on Fox. I can also tell you that uh, where's the money at here? The average XFL player is making $55,000 for the season. Uh, some of these star players, such as quarterbacks, are earning up to five hundred thousand dollars. All right, so uh, you know, sustainable. <laughs> so, how does the season? How long does it go? And does um, it have a big bowl thing at the end, or what? I believe they do have a championship game, and now I I don't have this officially in front of me, but I thought that it was eight weeks. Eight weeks. I don't know if that's true or not, so I wouldn't uh, like if you're on Jeopardy. Don't answer with like, what is eight weeks, is Alex? Because then they're coming after you because you were I, wrong. Because I don't know, but that's what I think is right. Do you feel that it's eight weeks? Oh, Nikki, I don't are have we, any feelings. Are we going by your feelings? Let's go with feelings. Eight weeks. That sounds good. The worst podcast with the best listeners. This is the worst of the riot podcast. 30 to 60 minutes away. <laughs> We said that last time. No, we didn't. We we said 30 to 90 minutes. Oh, so we're getting closer. So that was 30 minutes ago. (laughs) So we are still in, your word, the window. We're in the window for a upcoming riot food fight. I'm shooting for about half an hour from now. So we're trying the uh, two new (laughs) Ding Dong flavors. Well, I don't know if one's new. It's just the white chocolate one. We couldn't say no to it. But the other one is a winter mint. Yes. And that one we will be te- uh, testing too. You have to watch us eat them, and I'll tell you why. Which you can do that on our Facebook t- page, facebook.com slash radio. We'll go, we'll go on there soon when we're doing the you, food fight. You have to see the box. The winter mint? You have got to see the winter mint box because <laughs> it says right on here, Try it frozen. Like they're doing everything to make you think it's like frozen from the movie. It 
looks on telling there's the, you. There's the snow ice like slashes through it of like if you were <laughs> casting ice and snow from your hands. The uh, what do you call it? The font that they use. It looks like the movie font. They were trying. Like, they are not screwing around. And Especially the word frozen. It is the font. And it's blue it's and white. It's papyrus. I know what you did. <laughs> I know what you did. I know what they're doing. So it's, it's for, a limited edition for the winter mint ones. Good Lord. Does they're that bug so, you that they're doing that? No, I just happened to flip it over to the back. Don't and look I just, at the calories. Don't look at it. It's shocking. Don't. It's shocking. Well, it's the mint. It's the winter mint. What do you Is, think? What about this? Is that what? It, yeah. The look white at fudge. That. What the heck? What are you doing? What do you think they're going to be? Good for us? Well, you could fortify them with vitamins and minerals at least. No way. It's whole grain. That is. <laughs> Uh, that is shocking. Mm. I am shocked. You, sir, have shocked me. <laughs> well, let's have some, why don't we? Okay, let's do it. So, again, our Riot Food Fight will be coming up in a little bit, and we'll go on Facebook so you can watch us during it. That's at Radio U for our, the Radio U Facebook page, but yep. it'll also be on our show page, which is at Radio U Riot. All right. Stay, take a little time. Get ready. <laughs> go little, get the ones from the freezer. You you guys go get uh, your uh, at home winter mint ding dongs, and we can all eat together. <laughs> I'm sure you have some just waiting for this moment. Ready to go. You're listening to a morning show hosted by two people who absolutely despise getting up in the morning. <laughs> Please give me a break one time. The Riot Radio U. Nikki, did you watch the video I sent you last night? Um, yes, I did. Did you? I did. What yes. video did I send you? You sent Here, me. Let me scroll back and look because I can't remember. <laughs> No, me. no, the Why truth is out. The truth is out. No, I remember you did, and I clicked on it. <laughs> I just don't remember it right now. A lot of time has passed. Hang yeah, on. it's been at no, least 10 hours. No, the Razor, which is some old phone that's now back as like a new phone. It's back, Nikki. I, I did watch. Was it CNET or whoever? Yep, and CNET. they were um, sitting there, and there's a bunch of people that were reviewing it. They posted a video yesterday of uh, the new Motorola Razor, which is a. Imagine taking your iPhone and just being able to fold it in half. Yes. So you just fold it in half. So it's it's fatter. It's like wider than the other foldable phone. Yeah, it's not like it's not like an old school flip where, phone. Where, you like know, it, you're folding that way like a book. Yeah. This one's you're folding uh, the other way. Right. And so they say that uh, everybody, it was interesting to watch their reactions because I feel like they're my kind of people. Nerdy CNET people, mm. you know. Well, they all looked old enough to probably be around when the original phone was in. Yeah, I, so can I don't see know that. if some of the positive distance was because of like warm, fuzzy memories from maybe oh. what would have been probably their first phone. I don't know. I felt like their reactions to it seemed fairly genuine, and I know that's not what you're saying, but uh, I think the idea of like a foldable phone, if they can make that tech really, really work, mm-hmm. I think we'll absolutely have that because. I think about how big your phone is. What if I could reduce the size of your phone by half without taking away any of the things you love about your phone? I think it's more uh, also very important for, like, say, if you were a guy, because then you carry it usually in your pocket. Whereas for me, I got a big purse. Just so make you just it bigger. don't even care. Don't even care. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> make it as big as you want. You know what? That's fair. Uh, for me, <laughs> the idea of a smaller phone is attractive. It's enticing. Because if it gets too much bigger, I'm not going to be able to put it in my pocket. It seemed like when I was watching it, because I did watch it when you sent it to I'm me. I'm sure you did. It seemed like <laughs> when we talked <laughs> in the beginning they were very much for it but then uh the one guy was like well you can once you fold it you can kind of feel the when you make it you know bigger you can kind of feel the foldable seam you know like right in the middle oh okay and i think once i f- would feel that i could never get it out of my mind that it's right there how often do you touch the middle of your phone um, not too often, but they say that you can see it, you know, you can feel and kind of know that it's there. Mm, I don't know. I am probably a little too positive on this thing, but like, I, I feel like I don't want this one. I don't. It's expensive. It, Isn't no, it over like, $2,000? I think it's right at $2,000. That's a lot of money for this phone. Yeah. Uh, I mean, even if this became the next big thing, I'm five years from this thing at least. <laughs> um, and that's for getting a used one. So, uh, but I'm curious to see like what, if the tech takes off, where does it go? Cause that to me seems like we've gotten bigger, 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 bigger. 
But now what now if we, we want to fold it? And because the next thing that we'll want is we're going to want a phone that's as big as our iPhone is now. But now we can open it up <laughs> and it's a 20 inch screen. I want it to kind of pop open and then it folds back down. OK, yeah, that's fine, too. <laughs> you said think about. Oh, gosh. Think well, about my that. watch. It can go fold down to my watch size and yeah. then pop open. Well, we still haven't gotten that hologram stuff worked out. Let's face it. What we really want is a watch that gives us access to Friday. The AI that assists Tony Stark in the Avengers. That could be it. I'm on board. So for that. yeah, they were just talking um, for the reviews of the Motorola, the new one. It, it, I think it looks cool for the new razors. I mean, I'd use it, but instead, I'll just get a two year old iPhone. <laughs> you would use it if someone gave it to you for free. Oh man! If you're looking for all the funny moments you missed during the riot, we apologize. You won't find them here. There, there weren't any. This is the worst of the Riot podcast. So we found out that the reason that Birds of Prey hasn't done very well is the coronavirus. Uh, That's what we heard on the box office results. And, Nikki, I can tell you now that KFC has shut down in China. That's what I saw. Did you see that? Yeah, that that they had a couple of confirmed cases from workers at KFC, so they finally shut down, too. All right. So uh, they were diagnosed with the coronavirus. It was a KFC worker who prepared food and served it to customers. Not to be like all that, because I feel like a lot of people are starting to state this, but I just am so worried that this is way bigger than has been let on in a fast enough way, if that makes sense. Like, is anybody else really wondering and should we be more concerned or what? You just opened the speculation window. Yeah, I know. So you know what? I, everything that follows is speculatory. Yes, but it was just so much of that from this, past, from this past week. And I feel like everybody's been lied to about the severity of it. Nikki, I find it odd that you would think that China would lie to I the know. world about what's going on inside their country. And dude, if you watch some of the videos of like how they're treating the people there and if they have masks on, if they don't, the rewashing of masks, like it's it's just something. Some of what I have seen video of is terrifying. Uh, and it's just like, uh, what? People that don't want to go in the box. Yeah, basically. Being put in the box. Like, yeah, if you've seen it, you've seen it. If you haven't, Yeah, you don't need it. So after this weekend and with it continuing, it just makes me uh, makes me feel especially bad if you're stuck there. If you're a resident, if you live there. Yeah. um, And you have no other way out. And you have no KFC. Now you also have no KFC. So does that really hit home? (laughs) It's really making it the hard thing. Well, I'll tell you what, Nikki, it hits home for some people. But I'm glad they did. It's just would that should that have been sooner? Should that or for all these places that have closed? So they did say that they are starting a contactless food delivery system to avoid spreading disease. Well, so I used, don't know if you like leave it on the porch and ring the bell and run. No, or they've what. been using. Uh, you know how like some campuses here they have these snack delivery robots. Yeah, where they'll just bring your food like, like that's in, your order. Like in Judge Dredd. No, just like at school. Oh. <laughs> So they're using something okay, similar sure. to that where these places will deliver the food that way, but it has to be with a little delivery robot, no human contact. Okay. All right. Well, that's the thing is like a person still making that. The food, yes. Yeah. Like, so what is it? They think the coronavirus cooks out? Well, you still have to go get food too, but you're just you're not allowed to leave. And then some like gosh, the one I saw yesterday, they're they're mandatory like locking you in your in your place. Yeah. Not like you just can't leave. It's a, no, we're locking you in. And then they were saying, well, what about if the if something happens inside your place? You can't get out. Well, I mean, what's going to uh, happen in I there? I can't. I don't even want to anymore. I can't. It's That's so because, upsetting. That is because <laughs> anytime somebody tells you you can't do something, you become obsessed no, with doing I, it. I just feel so bad for these people. Like, you really are stuck there. It just seems to be getting worse. It's not getting better yet. So... Yeah. All right. That's all I have. That's all you got? (laughs) That's all I got. Our food fight is coming later, and I just feel bad. (laughs) Well, you know what? It's going to be... Nikki, we have been... We bought these long Long before. before. That's how long they've been sitting here. (laughs) It's going to be fine. The whining, the loathing, the insightful commentary on postmodern historical doctrine. 
Okay, maybe not the last one. You're listening to The Riot on Radio U. And I'll have the number eight. That's a party platter. It serves 12 people. I know what I'm about, son. The Riot. The Riot. Well, Nikki, once again, you and I find ourselves... Having to have a snack during stuck, the show. Stuck here, <laughs> being force-fed a bunch of unhealthy food, and I just feel terrible about it. I We've got to get out of here. You know, today was the day we were going to be strong and like have a really smart choice day, but... We have to do a food fight. This was the one, Nikki. But this one, I think we were most happen. looking forward to this when we we went out, Obi and I, and grabbed some food fight items. And this uh, winter mint limited edition ding dong was the most um, anticipated item out of our entire uh, basket full of. Weird. It's just <laughs> it's the one that we're super curious about. Yeah. So if you see it, it says uh, frozen. And it's definitely done in the frozen font. Shameless. (laughs) Shameless. But they did suggest that you try it frozen. And I never thought to do that with a ding dong, though. It's been a long time since we've had one of these. Oh, man. So, okay, here's what I think we should do. And feel free to tell me I'm wrong. Okay. What do you want? I feel like we should start with the unfrozen one so that we have... Like that, and then we try the frozen one because they want us to try it frozen. That's true, but we also have the white fudge. I feel like that's going to be the lesser of the flavors. So I almost feel like we should try that one first because the mint is going to be so it's powering. Be overpowering. Yeah, okay, it'll just overpower right. the plain one. All right, so this is what we have here is the white fudge ding dong. It's just a plain old white fudge. And we did not freeze that one. They didn't suggest it. So. They made no suggestions about eating it, just that we should eat it. It's fantastic. I bet it is, isn't it's it? It's so good. I love the white chocolate stuff. Absolutely amazing. That's, That's really good. Mm. Yep, yep, yep. I don't know if I can trust you, so I got to try it. Oh, yeah, you have to try it on your own. <laughs> it really is good. It's good. So that's the white chocolate fudge one. Yeah, yeah. That's good. This may shock you, but they do well with that white chocolate fudge. It is. It's fantastic. Okay, so then we'll try the uh, winter mint. This is the limited edition one from Hostess. Okay, so are you going cold first? Um, I think what? we should go warm than cold. Okay. So we can find out. We can do this. If it's actually better frozen. You know how when you go to work, you're like, oh my gosh, you got all these things and, and you're trying to figure out the answer. This is our important oh. uh, thing for the day. So oh, wait, the what are we doing? smell is good. We're it has a good ones? smell. And don't forget the mint is supposed to, oh wow, there's a lot of mint in there. The mint's inside of it. Yeah, see that? Mm. How is the mint? Is it toothpaste or is it pretty good? Well, it's kind of toothpaste Kind of? I don't. It's not bad though. Yeah, that's that, good. That blue mint looks like toothpaste. Well, of so, course it does. And we could probably, we'll just brush our teeth with it. It's like you're brushing your teeth with your snack. You don't have to do it afterwards. It actually, that tastes it's good. It's nice. It's not too, um, the inside is not like if it was just icing. It's not too overpowering. I feel like I need a little. Need a little water? Palate cleanser there? <laughs> you don't get any. <laughs> no. No go. All right, the frozen one, finally. All right, here we go. Last of everything, the ding dongs, the winter mint. Boy, they went from, sorry. I interrupted. You no, go no, ahead. no, go ahead. I was just, they went from really frozen to kind of frozen very quickly. Wow, well, they don't freeze all the way through. Yeah, all right. Sorry, uh, last one to try. Is it better frozen? Oh, let it go. <laughs> you like it better frozen? Absolutely. I do not. Really? No, I don't. I don't think the cake tastes as good. I actually feel like it enables the cake to get out of the way of the true flavor. So the mint, oh, it mint does better with it frozen. But if you like a soft cake with these little uh, things, you'd prefer the other way. I like it frozen. Okay. <laughs> so now we're good. I like that. Hey, uh, can we just also just, I like them. Those are all good. <laughs> Those are all wonderful. <laughs> <sighs> It's good, right? I do need some water, too. I will say oh, you, you do need a little water afterwards. We had o- a lot. Overpowered. So that's the Riot Food Fight for the new Winter Mint Limited Edition Ding Dongs and the White Fudge ones. This is the worst of the riot on Radio U. Okay, Nikki. I, it, it's ev- actually everybody. Everybody's got to listen. It's very seldom that I can introduce Nikki to anything. Yeah. Anything I show Nikki, she already knows it. I got you on this one. Which is it? She does not know what the Wilford, or excuse me, just the Brimley Cocoon line is. I've not heard of it. I actually follow it on Twitter. So Wilford Brimley is the diabetes guy. 
And I don't even think he does those commercials? commercials anymore. But yeah, do you remember he would always do those commercials about how you get the diabetes? And he was on a horse or something? Yeah, and it was always in the memes. Like when they would say diabetes, it would be a picture of Wilford Brimley. Okay, what um, was he though? Was he an a, actor? He's an actor, and he is, I don't know what different people will say he's most well known for. He did uh, commercials for Quaker Oats as well, and he was in Cocoon and Cocoon the Return. Those are two movies from the 80s in which he plays a, an actor or a character who is an old man at a rest home mm-hmm. that he ends up encountering these aliens and they basically give him uh, vitality back. It's whatever. Um, but they have this thing called the Brimley Cocoon line. Brent Wilford Brimley was 56 when he filmed Cocoon the Return in 1988. And he's supposed to be this really, really old guy, Mm -hmm. but he's 56. And so if you follow the Brimley Cocoon line on Twitter, they will tell you when an actor crosses the the Brimley Cocoon line. And so they were pointing out that in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, best supporting actor Brad Pitt. Oh, is he over the line? Is over the Brimley Cocoon line. And then, of course, they'll show a picture of that actor next to Wilford Brimley in Cocoon. And it's crazy yeah but they're trying to make the other guy look older right well no it's just the idea of same age like this guy looked really old at 56 look at what these people look like at 56 and i actually think it's a if you go back and look historically at like expectations of what people look like at certain ages it keeps getting kind of younger and kind of younger and that's the part about it that's interesting to me like several years ago Tom Cruise crossed the Brimley cocoon line. But you tell me Brad Pitt's 56? Yeah. Okay. It's the new 56, Nikki. I guess. So what's uh, Keanu Reeves then? Is he is he still in his 40s or is he I, in his 50s? Let's see. How, how I, old I, are these guys? How old? <laughs> how old is Keanu? Yeah, you know, just a light Google he's search. 55. So he's 55? He's, he's one year no away way. from when John Wick 4 releases oh, he'll be over and the this Matrix line. 4 releases... He'll be over the Brimley cocoon line. That's weird. It, so there's a it Twitter weird. account that tells you when famous people cross over. They cross the Brimley cocoon line. In fact, let's see. What is it? It's at Brimley line. B-R-I-M-L-E-Y. I had never heard of that before. Yeah. And what I think is really weird is like when you like when you see some of these people and you're just like, why do these men look so good? <laughs> why are they looking so young? They look weirdly young like somebody who just crossed the brimley cocoon line last week was kate blanchett mm. she looks fantastic maybe so, these are the better pictures they're picking well, I'm i mean sure, that's I'm sure a possibility. sometimes they they look worse yeah let's see anybody else who's recently crossed uh let's see uh, owen wilson oh well I, I haven't seen him in a while yeah i mean you haven't seen him in anything in a while uh oh and uh renee zellweger she crossed the brimley cocoon line uh, last year Okay. Yeah. So there you go. And we could just go down. I, for whatever reason, it fascinates you. I, it fascinates <laughs> me. And so I follow Brimley Cocoon Line on Twitter, mostly because I heard people referencing it and I needed to know what it was. Hey, so what do you think of Obadiah? The truth is, he's not a very nice person. Okay, well, what about Nikki? The very best day is. You're listening to The Riot on Radio U. This is going to sound a little dumb, but I'm just going to throw it out there. Uh, Today, I buy a used phone. I really hope it works. (laughs) Well, no, you already bought one, but today it actually gets delivered to you. It arrives today. I have taken the recommendations of many of you. Use Swappa.com to buy a used phone. It seems like everything's going to be okay. Fingers crossed. I bought an (laughs) iPhone 10. You're like, oh, but I, uh, there's been a 10. There's been a 10 X or a 10s. So you got the smaller one or the larger one? I got the smaller one. The smaller one. Which is still like it's 5.8 inches. That's plenty. Should be plenty fine. Not for you, but I like the larger one. They could keep making it bigger and I just keep getting happier. No, like I'm (laughs) I'm good. Like I I actually took my uh, Moto G6 and I laid it up next to an iPhone 10 and I was like, oh yeah. Yeah, you'll be fine. We're good. That's plenty because uh, yeah, whatever. But here's my question, Nikki. I've never had, now I've had iPads. Uh-huh. I've had, oddly enough, three different iPads. Um, <laughs> you got your Mac. Uh, I've got a Mac. But Nikki, what do you consider to be, like, as a new iPhone user? Uh-huh. 
what do I need to get when I get my phone? Like, what are a couple apps that are... Nikki, what's the killer app for the iPhone? You know, I don't... In the war against Android! What well, year is, is no this? there is no war. We've made peace a long time ago. Usually everything now is is Universal. Android. Yeah, and iPhone at the same time. That's true. So I don't think that really... There really is any suggestions. I just think you just go and play around, watch some stuff, the screen you're going to love, take some pictures. That was your biggest complaint about your previous, you know, phone with the camera not being so hot. Well, the biggest one that I surfaced, I, I, you know what? One of the other things that annoys the crap of me is the way it interacts with it. It's fine. It's fine. (laughs) You don't have to worry about that much, do you? Don't worry about it. It's actually (laughs) a great phone. It's just not necessarily the best for my circumstances. Sure. And then you're going to sell that one. You know what? I was thinking about, uh, I may have a use for it that is not ah, me selling it. Still keep it around? Uh, because uh, I have a tablet that I keep by my bed that I play like sleepy sounds, like all these different things on. And uh, it's an Amazon Fire that by hook and by crook I got for free. Uh, but it is. Wheel it and deal in. It's probably <laughs> five years old. Uh, maybe it's time for and, that to go. And it, man, really? Like, let's get some first world problems. It takes forever for it to like get started. How are you even? They're like, how are you go, making it? I'm gonna go brew some coffee. <laughs> Let me get this started so I can watch it tonight before bed. Aww. Um, so I thought maybe I would just turn this phone into that thing that I listen to while I go to sleep. Yeah, that's a good idea. So that that's my thought. We'll see. Uh, Want to say hi to Aaron? He says, yeah. Everything will be okay, except it's an iPhone. <laughs> Come on, Aaron. Listen, Obi mentioned this last week when he broke the news to everybody that he's switching to an iPhone. Yeah, it's tough he's, all over. He's the type of person that he has things in both the Android and the iOS world. Like, he's good. All right, let's see. Chris says, I have a 10S standard screen, and I love the size of it. JC says, get Gboard keyboard. It's really the best keyboard on iOS. Well, I hope so, because I'll tell you what, on my phone, it sucks. <laughs> just wait, though. Just it's wait fine. and see. Just wait and see. Play around I with it today. I did order a case. Oh, you did? Yeah, I ordered one that uh, CNET tested at 10 feet. And you need the screen. Uh, yeah, I haven't done that yet, but I'll need to get, get one of those. You got to get a screen one. I used to not be into those, and then I just started cracking screens left and right, but I have them on there, so thankfully they save a lot. Just pull it off, so... Yeah, I'll do that, too. It, basically, at this point, it's like you need your phone and then the thinking that goes on your phone. <laughs> you just need the accessories. You'll Gotta be all set. All. Well, it's going to be a fun day for you today. Yeah. It's always a great day when you get a new piece of tech. Yeah, because it always works just the way it's supposed to, and everything transfers over really easily. It's going to work fine. I know. No, I'm just ready for it to be a train wreck. And then if it's not... Good for Just me. Start over again. Good for me. <laughs> Pretend it's a brand it is a brand new phone, but start with like new contacts, new everything. It's a <laughs> new start. It's a whole new me, Nikki. <laughs> I finally changed. Proper planning prevents poor performance. Clearly, the riot didn't properly plan. This is the worst of the riot on Radio U. You may have been hanging with us earlier this morning. We were discussing the XFL, but we couldn't find their official theme song. Well, but wait. Nikki. The XFL started on Saturday. It did. And Obi watched some of it. Yeah, I did. And, and he found the theme song. I found the theme song. It's, it's exactly like I thought it would sound like. But it's love dated. I was looking for something instrumental. Oh, really? I know they always have stuff. You know, let's scroll ahead. For the love of fool. This is also, it's on the field. Ah. So, like, there's the XFL logo, and then it says, for the love of football, on the field. Oh, yeah. It's... That's good. Okay. And you don't want to play too much. I bet they're copywriting that thing left and right. Nikki, then <laughs> other people have your, they have their own, like, everybody has their own. So like this is the oh, each D- team does? Yeah. Ah. This is the DC Defenders official theme song. Wait, are there words for this? Put your hands up high. All Nikki, right. could you I need you to I put your hands up. I don't want to put my hands up. Please, I need them up and I don't want they need to. to be high. I don't want I don't to. Like just a little, like, I'm all not the going way up. to. Well, you're not you're not gonna do I'm well not a in the team XFL player. At all. Yeah, I'm not I going to I can tell to. you that right now. <laughs> Like, I'm already getting complaints from Vince McMahon. The hotline is ringing. Yeah, that I'm not being a Team XFL player. That's right. That's mm. right. So, so if you watched on Saturday, it. said it wasn't too bad. It wasn't the worst. Well, And at least it gives you Saturday football if you're not into Sunday one. Um, you know what? And I think that was the official review. <laughs> 
I think he covered all of it. I think that was all of it. The the overwhelming sound that I feel like I heard from all of social media was it's not that bad. I heard one What's people wrong with expecting just the middle. I had one person say, I think I'm on board. Sometimes when things aren't that bad, <laughs> you're not disappointed by it. And I think a lot of people got disappointed by the NFL stuff. And that led to them wanting to create another league. Yeah. Well, listen, let's not pretend that creating another league is about anything but making money. Sure. Because that's what it's about. But they but, saw an opening because yeah, people they, were disappointed in the yeah. choices that the NFL was making. They were waiting for a moment. And I think they've got a decent moment there to uh, to bring it in. Well, so they I, do with the songs, I guess. Listen, Nikki, <laughs> can you imagine how many boardrooms those I songs know. have been played in? And people how much have, money was spent on those songs? So much. Because it can't be like too modern, but it can't be too old, but it has to be a little older because they're probably going after a, a certain slight, demographic. Yeah, a certain yeah. demographic, and they got to make sure that you remember that sort of sound. That's exactly right. That's what it was. Exactly right. Well, I'm glad so, you took the time to find it. Or did boy. someone send it to you? No, no, no. I, oh, I. You've been looking. Since I've been looking, Nikki. <laughs> He's been looking the whole morning for I it. I found myself that XFL theme. Great. I I'm hope gonna, it's a whole playlist of it. I'm going to be rocking that in my car like all week. The right. Not everyone's fan. I wonder whose idea this was. Radio U. Uh, Nikki, did Downton Abbey, like, did that win any awards at the uh, Oscars last night? Did that, For did the that movie? Get, did I, that even get? I don't know. Maybe, like, costumes um, or sound Abbey, or... Oscars. Did it get nominated for anything? I mean, it looked snobby enough to be, like... <laughs> no, but it was a different type of snobby. It was, like, PBS snobby. BBC. Yeah, okay. So that's different. Let's see. Oscars. That's, like, TV. It was TV, and then they made it into a movie. So Oscars doesn't always like that. Looks like... Uh, Looks Nothing. like they're okay. Yeah, they, they made it out. But, you know, uh, some people still really care about Downton Abbey. Yeah, I stopped after the first season, but there was a lot. I mean, people enjoyed it. Pe- people like it. The movie, I felt like, had some buzz going into it, but then kind of went away quietly. But People didn't like it? No, it was just there. Okay. It was just there, and that was it. And then it was gone. Nothing wrong with being there. More people should show up. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So here we go. Downton Abbey, the Highclere Castle, which is where they film it. You've probably at least seen a photo of the building. Uh, they're looking for a butler. Like so a not, real in butler. The sh- not in the show not stuff, because that's all over, but we're talking I'm, like the actual castle. I'm talking about that building, that castle, <laughs> wants a real life butler. And you could uh, go for the job. You have to have excellent customer service skills, enthusiasm. Nice. Uh, you also have to have entry requirements that include the right to work in the UK, GCSE. And numeracy. You'll be, no idea what those are. That's because we don't have the right to work in the UK. We don't understand what that means. You'll be paid a competitive hourly rate and be given accommodations. So maybe you could live at the castle. What do you think competitive hourly rate means? It worries me because they say hourly. So I don't know. Actually, no. I think that's probably a good thing. Because if you told me I was going to be a butler on salary, what that translates to me is you're going to work all day, every day, all the time, no matter what. <laughs> but only paid your salary. Well, if yeah. the salary is nice enough, then that's good. Yeah. You have to be trained in silver and butler service. What's that? What's that? I think silver would be um, dishes, like... That sort of stuff? Oh, I don't think so, Nikki. I think there's a legitimate werewolf fear here. <laughs> I don't think there is. That's so not a part of it. the idea is if silver service, like, that means that you've shown that you are capable of crafting and maintaining a silver armory <laughs> in case werewolves attack. <laughs> then you can have this. Yeah. Remember a few weeks ago we talked to you about, I think it was in, was it Ireland? Or where was that coffee shop in some island? Off the coast. That was Northern Ireland. Yeah, they were looking for a uh, barista. There was like two spots where you go at this very remote coffee shop. You get to live there. If you didn't end up making it for that job, maybe you could try for this one. Yeah, well, and I will tell you with this one, uh, you get accommodation. I believe you get to live on grounds. Mm-hmm. So that's something. You could always be walking around like, well, oh, now, Mr. Darcy. No, no, remember, why is that a negative? Because they'll put you down in the dungeon? No, because then you're always around in case something needs to be worked on. The closer they have you, the worse it is for you. I will tell you, there's nothing worse here than me giving the keys to the transmitter tower. It'd be like that. <laughs> Try that. It's the worst when you're the closest and you're like, okay, fine. Just this come in. The, here's a key to the tower. Just in case something breaks, <laughs> we'll call you. If there's an issue. So if you're interested in this job, you have to have all those requirements filled. Look, bottom line, if you've watched the show... 
then you're not in. Because you don't have those This qualities. is only for people. You don't have, <laughs> if you watch the TV show, you're not qualified. You must have already probably gone to Butler School, which I guess is a thing. But to succeed in this role, you need a can-do attitude. Attention to detail, good personal presentation, and strong communication. Organizational skills are paramount, is what they're saying. A flexible attitude and ability to work within a team is important. Flexible attitude, do you know what that means? We're going to screw you over. (laughs) I know, but you have have a good attitude about it. We're going to ruin your plans. (laughs) Get used to it. Excellent customer service skills, fluent English, and like working with people. You know That's what, Nikki? the qualifications. I uh, I wouldn't be a good fit for no, that. No, I actually think I would. I kind of check a lot of those boxes. Yeah, but like, are you going to do tea service? I would love to. No, you're not receiving tea oh, service. Oh, I have to be the one to bring the tea you're service? You're bringing the tea service. That's eh, not as fun, but maybe. I think I could with a smile and still a good flexible attitude. I don't think so, and I'm going to tell you why. If you guys ever get the privilege of spending time with Nikki, tell her she's done something wrong and see Aww. what happens. Just can't. Crushing me. No, it doesn't crush her at all. She'll spend the rest of the day showing you how you were wrong. (laughs) Well, I mean, if you did it wrong. And uh, (laughs) because Nikki can't be wrong. Mm -mm. And so that means, Nikki, I think as a butler, you have to be like, oh, I'm wrong all the time. But see, that's that flexible (laughs) attitude that they're looking for. (laughs) That's right. They're looking for someone to to ruin their life, place the blame on. And live close by. And live real close. (laughs) Next door, even. (laughs) We're listening to the worst of the riot. Radio U. You know, Nikki, it happened again. We keep, everyone says what about Canada? That is so polite. So nice. It's wonderful. I've been there many times. It's clean. Lovely. It's, it's wonderful. And then we come across this. <laughs> it still has its problems though. The first rule about Canadian elementary school fight club is you don't talk about Canadian elementary school fight club. But someone did. The second rule of Canadian Elementary School Fight Club is don't cry, you big baby. <laughs> yeah, there we've got some adults in Canada in... All uh... oh, the kids would fight at night in a school parking lot? Oh, yeah. Whoa, so this is in Western Alberta, Canada. The fight is prearranged. The location and time is selected and certain students are invited. So basically, fight. this is uh, the Grand Prairie and District Catholic Schools. Yeah. In that area. So, you know, the Catholics fights. Catholics versus the, the, prairies. the whoever's. So the fights were scheduled in advance and they were held at night. Oh, yeah. Takes a little planning, doesn't it? Organizing. The kind of skills <laughs> you usually find in... Adults. So on Friday, the parents of, of kids that were involved uh, in the school system all received details about it because they had to notify that there were fights in the local parking lot of a local school. Mm-hmm. So two adults were the ones organizing the fights. <laughs> Wasn't even the kids. It was the grownups. Yeah, it was their idea. They saw that there was <laughs> money to be made. It's just like high school football, except, I love you know. This. Cars would form a circle and turn on the lights. Up. So then they would film the video. Like, the fights would be intense. They would have lots of injuries. One student was hop- hospitalized from it, and they caught them. <laughs> love that they put the cars around. So stupid. Uh, it's, it's, it's what you think it'd be. Yeah. And... You know how it is. You're like, hey, look, all you got to do is show up. I'll give you a hundred bucks. You might end up taking a beating, whatever. You're like, sure, that's fine. You have no idea where it's going to go from there. <laughs> Man, violence, real violence is nothing like it's depicted ever. In the movies, no, yeah. No, it isn't. And recovering from violence is never as easy as they make it look either. Well, they haven't really talked about the money side of it. Like, who was getting what? Did you have to pay money to be in on this? They're just saying that they're warning for any of adults who were involved, <laughs> you face being arrested. And if any students were involved, you face a suspension or being expelled. Well, you know how it is. <laughs> Nikki, I little... don't. I've not been in a fight club. You know what, Nikki? Don't act. All right? Don't pretend. <laughs> we, we don't have one here. Don't never had one in school. That never. you haven't been setting up. Okay. Here's. It's time for the real thing. You've heard of the Battle of the Buzz, right? Okay. That was Nikki's idea. And if someone doesn't like the outcome of Battle of the Buzz, you can come here and fight, fight about it. You could it. fight it out. Not many people take us up on that option. We don't but... hear it very often, <laughs> but you, what you have to do is you represent a band and then you have to choose someone that's going to, you're going to fight to represent the other band. Mm-hmm. And whoever wins that fight, you know, you could potentially get the results 
pulled back. So that's Radio U, Canadian Elementary School, Fight Club, but with Battle of the Bus. It's not going to happen. It could. <laughs> it's not going to happen. We could make it nope, happen. Nope. The riot. Just because it's bad doesn't mean it's not good. Wait, isn't that exactly what I mean? It's the riot on Radio U. You've probably heard someone say this before. So listen, if it sounds familiar, you tell me. Uh, God's never going to give you more than you're able. He'll never give you more than you can you're able to handle. Um, I've got news for you. That's actually not true. You won't find that written down anywhere really, truly important. Uh, because one, people act like <laughs> so, every time something bad comes along, it's like, well, God must have done this. Of course. What? Can we please stop blaming God for all the bad stuff? We know we never give him credit for the good stuff, but something bad comes along and like, well, God's given me this, but I can handle it. Uh, that's not true. And two, here's another part that's not true. Your life is going to have things in it that you can't handle all by yourself. And so what ends up happening? You end up banging your head against the wall in the middle of all this difficulty going, God wouldn't give me more than I could handle. And what happens? You get mad at God mm. because you think God's the one that's handing you all this garbage. And you're, you get mad at yourself. You're supposed to be strong enough to take it, but you can't seem to do it. And there you are adding existential misery on top of actual misery, right? Here's something I want you to know is that God is not the source of the bad things in your life. That's one. And two, God does not expect you to handle your life on your own, period. God knows that there are things in your life that you are either facing now, have faced, or will face that will be more than you. You will come to the end of yourself and realize, wait, I don't have quite enough to get through this. Now, I realize that's not like some hugely motivational thing. You know, like, yeah! great but it's true we all know it's true right i mean i i don't like thinking about it either to be completely honest but it's real but here's the great news in the middle of all of that if you think that you can't go on any further if you think you can't do it if you're mad at god about what's going on the good news is that you're wrong that's good news because now it's time to turn things around now it's time to get the help that you've cut yourself off from. Now it's time to invite God into your situation, not as the person that's making things worse, but at the person who loves you and wants to make things better. Man, if you don't have a relationship with God, you need God. You need him to give you the strength to do what you got to do. You need him to show you a better way to live. You need him to help you in day to day. I'm telling you, man, it could be something as small as, hey, God, could you help me find my shoes? Oh, God could never be bothered with that. Well, you obviously don't know him because if you did, you would know that you could talk to him about just about anything. Invite him in. Don't take my word for it. You get to know God for yourself. Say, Jesus, I want that. I want you in my life. I want you to fill me with your spirit. I want to have a relationship with you. God, I need help. Here's what's going on. Lay it out. Let God get involved. The Riot Podcast. Radio. You. Well, Nikki, over the weekend, I spent some time with Brad Pitt. You did? I finally got around to watching Ad Astra. So is that the one that came out last year where it was it came space out, one? Yep, it came out around my birthday last year, and it was a space one. And it's surreal and super cool, and also, you ever watch something you can't decide if it's brilliant or just dumb? Yeah. That's how I felt about oh, it. Oh, yeah. I couldn't decide which one it is because that movie is really just a long story about a man who grows up without his dad and then uh, finally realizes that he is like rejected by his dad. He's walking in his dad's footsteps and it's time to make a change. That's what that movie's about. So he goes to space or? And that's where he learns all of that. Okay. Oh, in space he learns all that? Yeah, He's yeah, like yeah. reflecting about it? Well, I mean, we're supposed to. Okay, maybe, I can't remember exactly he says, yeah, he kind of does. At the end, he has a little thing, and you're like, okay, we're supposed to compare this thing to the thing at the beginning and realize the steps that he has made. Mm -hmm. I feel like this is the movie that we should be showing in, like, father-son reconciliation groups all across the world. Oh, it's kind of sad like that. I didn't find it sad, and I didn't find, it didn't tug on my heartstrings at all. It was just kind of like, I just kept thinking, is this hard to doing? <laughs> Like that's Am what, I getting this or not? <laughs> like, is that uh, because a lot of times with a, a message movie, you mm -hmm. know, they bury it just a little. They make you do a little bit of the work, especially just, again, some of the like the way the movie plays out. It feels like 
it should be a little less obvious with what it's trying to tell you. But I mean, no, no, no. They're just but like. But it look good at least? It is a. On a superficial level? It is a spectacular looking and sounding film. Well, is there something with that? And to be clear, I actually think Brad Pitt was very good in it. Oh, um, there you go. I remember when it came out at your birthday, I think there was something else that came out. That I saw instead, well, but I don't remember Well, it took all the what. attention, yeah. and then everybody thought like this was going to be the new Brad Pitt movie coming back sort of thing, uh, and it just didn't do anything. Well, you know what? It is a good movie. He is good in it. Um, but I just felt it felt a little too obvious, but I thought his performance was good. And and to be frank, like the message that, you know, he kind of sees in that mix. Not bad. Like, it's not bad. I'm proud um, of you for watching a newer movie as like your weekend movie instead of he's been going to like classic movies. I know. Do you know what my next classic movie is? I've got it all lined What's up. What's your next one? The Great Escape. The Great Escape. The Great Escape. How old is that one? Uh, 1963. It's got um, oh, crap. Steve McQueen. In it, and uh, I can't remember what got me looking at it. Oh, that's is that the one that someone texted us about? Maybe that there's some part to the movie that became like viral or something recently. Maybe I don't know. not. I don't know, but something landed me there, and it's on Amazon on Prime. Of course, it so, is. All those old movies. Are. I know, like they have all these old <laughs> movies. So, like, I think that I don't know that I'm going to watch it today, but I think that's going to be my next one. I'm going to I'm going to go. That will at the very least be my next old movie sure that feels right that's what you've been doing and so to hear that you were watching a newer movie seems wrong you don't like that well no even though like that's normally what everybody else is doing but you just haven't done that in a long time i did find a couple of newer movies on netflix that i never saw like kind of b level like american assassin mm. i read those books and i was like i wanted to see that movie then completely forgot about it and it popped up not in my suggestions. I was on a deep dive. It's buried at the bottom of Netflix. <laughs> he finally which means found it. It must be really good. <laughs> Jake said it's the it's the hard boiled eggs thing. Do you remember? That is the movie then. No, no. Hard that's Or is that from this other one? That's from Cool Hand Luke. Ah, uh, that's, that's a different that's one. That's Paul Newman, not Steve McQueen. What am I, eighty? <laughs> Listen, it sounds the Why same. Why do right? I know these things? What are you doing? <laughs> Gosh, if I could just get something important in my brain. <laughs> Instead. No, no, this is oh, what you're doing. Oh, my gosh. This was the worst of the riots, and we'd like to congratulate you on having the stomach to stick around to the very end. <laughs> The Riot exists because Radio U exists, and Radio U only exists because of your support. Find out more and give now at RadioU.com slash donate.